I would now like to welcome our next speaker to the stage, Emeritus Professor Paul Worley. Paul is Australia's first National Rural Health Com Commissioner, appointed a little over a year ago at the end of 2017. He studied, me studied medicine at the University of Adelaide, graduating in 1984. He was in a solo rural practice in Lamaru, in the Murray Mallee region of South Australia, and then moved to a group rural practice at Clare, a wine growing area in the mid north of the state. And, and that seems to make sense if there's good wine there. In 1992, Paul was elected the president of the Rural Doctors Association of South Australia. And in 1994, he took up an appointment as senior lecturer in rural health at Flinders University in South Australia. Interestingly enough, Paul is the only fellow of the Australian Academy of Health and Medical Sciences to have won the local tennis championship in Lamaru. So please welcome him to the stage. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here in Palo Alto Land and I want to acknowledge uh, the traditional owners and custodians of this land, uh, as well as acknowledging that for my family this is somewhat of a homecoming as well because a couple of hundred years ago uh, my great-great-great-grandfather one of my great 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 grandfathers uh, came here uh, on His Majesty's pleasure uh, and formed a family which uh, subsequently has been part of what we now call Australia. I mention those two acknowledgements because we can learn from both. We certainly can learn from Indigenous Australia and Indigenous Australians their understanding of health, a holistic understanding which includes the biopsychosocio-spiritual understanding, the connection to country, we may call it a connection to place. But that has so much to inform us and teach us in our models of care and our models of training. And I hope that the work that uh, my office has been doing over this last year has uh, acknowledged that fully in the way we have been attempting to set up country-based, place-based training systems for people who live and work in the country. The other part of my introduction acknowledges that much of our health system, in fact much of our economic development over the, the last couple of centuries, is due to people who have come from elsewhere to make Australia their home. And I again thank God for the number of overseas trained doctors and other health professionals who have chosen to work in our rural and remote communities where our domestic graduates have not gone. Our communities would not be the same without you. I was asked to take this position on in 2017 as an initiative of the National Party and an initiative of the Parliament with bipartisan support through legislation was given till the middle of 2020 to define rural generalism and to develop a national rural generalist pathway. With the collaboration of a large number of people across the country last year, we ended up being 18 months ahead of that agenda item. And hence, the Minister, as she informed you previously, has asked me to look at what was always going to be important, the fact that rural health is a team sport. And there's no point in focusing on one member of the team when we're not looking at the whole of the team. So this year, to look at how those same principles, looking at quality, looking at distribution, looking at access, can be applied to the equally important allied health workforce across regional, rural and remote Australia. It has been wonderful to be working with the peak bodies across Australia in allied health this year and I look forward to continuing to work with them as we develop recommendations for government uh, to be delivered in October this year. 
I have also been struck in what I have learnt by the similarities in terms of the issues that confront the allied health professionals of rural Australia to what I learnt and worked with last year in the rural medical space. And I'd like to acknowledge what I have learnt by relating to a number of women who have inspired me as I've met them around the country. Um, I deliberately pick women because women are the majority of our health workforce. They are the majority of our health graduates. And yet our models of training, our models of care, our models of service, unfortunately, in many ways, relate to an older time a time when the majority of health professionals were a bit like me, pale, male and stale. <laughs> and we need to look forward. And we can learn from uh, the pathfinders. So uh, can I start with a woman who has been an inspiration for me for a number of years, uh, has started uh, as a social worker, and moved to a university because she saw the opportunity to expand from being a single provider of care to being a trainer of people who can provide care. As an Aboriginal woman, she has also recognised that there needs to be particular approaches to enabling Aboriginal kids to come through the various education sectors to be able to become allied health medical or nursing professionals. Kylie Stuthers is based in Catherine and she is now working with IHAS, working with AMSANT, working with her local community uh, on an Indigenous academy for Indigenous kids in that region to be able to work through the various levels of education to achieve becoming part of the health workforce. It's interprofessional, and so should all of our education be across rural Australia. And it's led by people in country, as all of our health professions education for rural Australia ought to be. We can no longer rely on the trickle out from our cities. As the Minister said, we need to take the grasp of this responsibility ourselves, train in country for country. Kylie Stuthers in Catherine. Another woman who really drove home to me the changes that we need is Caroline Mooney. Many of you here will know the Mooney name, especially if you've been to Australia's oldest uh, western settlement that is not a capital city, Georgetown, a uh, little, little way north of here. Um, is that Tim over there? It is. Yes, um, and you will probably know uh, Caroline's father, Tim, uh, who was uh, one of the supervisors of the year, uh, I think about six years ago, something like that. I mention Caroline for two reasons. One, because she is so different to her dad. <laughs> she has a job that will never be the same as her father's job. It will never be the same as the job that I trained for, where we train to be in one place, stay in that place, look after everything in that place. That is no longer the rural health jobs of the future. The jobs of the future are networked jobs across regions. And so Caroline works in different locations in her region, using her rural generalist skills in different ways in different locations and constructing a job that works for her as a woman, works for her practice and works for her region. She can do that because of collaboration. It, it is hard though because the systems are still based around individual towns competing rather than collaborating. But the jobs we need to create are jobs where people like Caroline can work in a region across 
sectors and across uh, geography, whether that be medicine, allied health or nursing. The other reason I mention Caroline is of course she was brought up in the town she's now practicing. More evidence of that return on investment that we get when we enable rural kids to have access to education to become rural health professionals. Yes, there are going to be people like myself who was trained in the city and who has spent the majority of their childhood in the city who choose to go rural as a vocation. But that does not account for the pull of geography, the pull of place, the pull of family as our Aboriginal mentors would tell us, the pull of country. And that pull of country is evident in Caroline's life as it is in many rural doctors and rural allied health professionals' life. So we have to enable rural kids to be able to get into our training programs and base it around that uh, well-known knowledge. In, in the middle of Victoria, there's a physiotherapist um, who, recognising that she only had two hands and could therefore only treat a limited number of patients as a physio, thought, well, perhaps there's a way of getting greater influence through having an understanding of public health, an understanding of policy. That then led her to realise, actually, there's not enough evidence to base all of that policy on. We need good data. We need good evidence. We need research that is based in rural communities for rural communities. Belinda O'Sullivan has been working with me in the Commissioner's Office, a rural physiotherapist who now is leading research that is informing the WHO on rural pathways for health workforce across the developing world. That is being led from rural Australia. That is not being led from a city of 10 million people. That is being led from a regional centre. We need people in rural Australia to be able to engage in research just as people in the health services in our cities engage in research, teaching and clinical practice and their patients get the benefits of all of that. Belinda is an example of how, as a health professional, we need to encourage people to take on that research arm of their profession so that we can create an evidence base that works for us and, as a wealthy country, use that evidence base to inform others around the world. Pat Miller is a woman who has inspired me for decades in Central Australia. She is not a doctor. She is not a health professional. She happens to run the Aboriginal Legal Service in Alice Springs and is also the Deputy Administrator. She also has a passion for health care. She is a representative of her community as an Indigenous woman, as an Alice Springs woman. For us to succeed politically, for us to succeed academically, for us to succeed in health service delivery, we must listen to our community. We must engage with our community and be accountable to that community. Listening to Pat is like listening to bottled wisdom. And I'm sure you all have Pats in your regional centres and regional towns. Let's ensure that our systems actually engage with the community in the same way that we as clinicians respect what our patients bring to us in our uh, healing environments. Can I uh, mention a couple of others? Adelaide Mitke. Who's ever heard of Adelaide Mitke? I thought so. We talk about technology as being important in health care delivery, and absolutely it is as an adjunct to the people-based health care that we need to have. But this is not a new thing. Adelaide was the founder of the School of the Air. She, in collaboration with the RFDS, the RFDS based in Alice Springs, Adelaide was based in Adelaide, strange, uh, developed an education process 
that enabled kids on remote stations to attain the same level of education as if they had access to a local primary and high school. We have a lot to learn from Adelaide. She did this over 100 years ago. It is not new, but it is still absolutely profound and absolutely crucial uh, to the future of our service delivery and our education delivery. At one time, people had to come to the cities in order to be able to train because that's where the libraries were. The libraries are now here. And we know that the ingredients for education, which are experience and wisdom in supervision, are present all across our wide brown land. There is no longer any excuse for our education processes to be based around city campuses. They can be distributed, as Adelaide Meekey said, and put into practice. And they can get the results that we have demonstrated again and again through university departments of rural health and rural clinical schools. The last person that I would like to mention is a dietitian from rural South Australia who recognised that if you look at the main reason that clinicians leave in a crisis, and I've heard this again and again, it's when there's been a communication breakdown between management and the clinicians. It's inside of us, it's inside the team. It's not external things, it's inside the team. And so the future of our health service requires that more of us gain expertise in leadership, in health service administration, and actually take that step to the dark side and get involved in leadership. So I want to acknowledge what I've learned from Tanya Lehman, a dietitian in the Riverland who has taken that step to become a leader, a leader as a dietitian of a multidisciplinary team of a health service that encompasses us all, and a person who's recognised that that leadership can be local and can be national uh, in the field of uh, this alliance. So I think of one of my patients, Jenny, a lady who suffers from intergenerational trauma. She is not Indigenous. It comes to us all. A lady who has chronic multiple illnesses that require the highest level of technical innovation and the most basic connection at a human level to work with. And yet, being only an hour and a half away, which is where my practice is from where a lot of that expertise is, when she is unwell, she cannot access care. Yes, it's an easy road to travel if you're well and if everything is right, but when you're crook, she just said to me the other day, look, I'm sorry, I can't get there. And I said to her, I think you're making the right decision. And I'm sorry that they can't get here, that they can't be here with you. If we look at the gap in mortality between remote Australia and the cities, there's a 1.3 difference. 1.3 difference. What does that mean? Remote Australia, about 500,000 people. That means that uh, every year there are about 200,000 people. There is an excess mortality of about 200,000 in, in remote Australia. That is a large number. We are not talking about little bits and pieces. In the time of this conference, another 12 of those people have died. And we are not dealing with a system that has no strength or resilience in order to respond. I hope with the examples I've given you that we have people that we can look to to guide our way forward. I could have mentioned the people who have led colleges, the women who are in leadership in our political systems who are actually taking things forward, the wives and partners of us all who have supported those who have done things for rural Australia. But I choose today to honour 
the women who have inspired us, the women of this generation past and of this generation future, who will, working together, take rural health forward. Thank you.